What's going on Facebook Live? Excited to come to you from one of my favorite places. I go walk at the Price Cove Basin Park and make my phone calls almost every day, even in the winter time, unless it's really cold. Um, and even some days then, I just like being outdoors. This has a way better view than my office, which is of the tin building next door. Not the greatest, um, you know, but that's all right. I'm not there to look at the view. I'm there to work, so it's okay. But this certainly is a better way to do my job and make calls, get some exercise, log some steps, and important, you know, vitamin D is important for fighting off COVID if you get it. So stay safe out there, people. And let me jump into the question of the day, which is, can you tell them the, explain the home selling process from start to finish? Boy, can I, I've been doing this for the better part of two and a half decades. I better be able to explain that process. Um, and it really, the process starts with, do you want to sell? Cause if you don't want to sell, the process doesn't really matter. And in my personal opinion, the first step in that process would be calling a realtor, preferably the Metzger team and having them come walk through the house. And not only can we give you an opinion of value, but we can also share with you those things that you could and should be doing to maximize your value on the market. Cause some things aren't going to matter and some things really matter. So for instance, um, if you've got a house that everything in the entire home is stuck in the seventies and you want to put in new carpet and new countertops, on top of the old cabinets and next to um, velvet wallpaper, it's gonna make it even worse because now it's gonna accentuate those things that the home needs versus everything just being kind of okay. Now, other people might differ in my opinion on that, but I've watched how buyers uh, walk in and say, oh, the carpet's nice, but look at everything else we have to do versus, well, honey, it's a fixer upper and we could do this and this. And ultimately, usually those homes that are like partially updated sit there on the market for a really long time. And if that's what you want, then certainly we'd, we'd be happy to oblige you. But most people put their home on the market to get it sold, right? So in my opinion, with two and a half decades almost of experience in the business, that is step one, is calling the realtor over making sure you get someone that can adequately interpret where your home fits on the market and what things you're going to do. Hey, Roseanne, thanks for watching. What, what things are going to maximize your value, decrease your time on the market, have the most buyer appeal? Um, you know, of course, we're going to talk to you about curb appeal, or we sure better be talking to you about curb appeal because I've seen so many times the front yard's a little tattered, the front door's a little bit faded or scratched, or I had this one house, man, I still don't know what happened. It looked like Freddy Krueger tried to get in. I kid you not, there was like <laughs> claw marks all the way down the door. It had rusted where it was clawed. I don't know what did that. I still to this day think it was Freddy. And I felt creepy inside that house because that was the feeling that front door gave me. Owners didn't want to fix it. Took us like two years to sell the home very different market than today. But nonetheless, every comment sheet that I got on that, because this was back when we did it on paper, not type it in on the computer and send it or send a text with feedback was what happened to the front door. And uh, so anyways, I think I ran an ad like Freddie might live here. Does that interest you? Um, and uh, ultimately we got the home sold and they put a new front door as they should. And so anyways, we can help with that. Sorry about that. I got a potential scam phone call just now. Um, anyways, um, back to uh, the live here. I, I like that uh, when people call so we can help maximize their value, but I also appreciate that I can help them know what's going on in the market, show them where they fit in the competition, look at the value of their home. So that, that's kind of step one is, is establishing what repairs should be done, need to be done, establishing the value. Then of course, uh, we, we negotiate the commission and the term of the listing. Typically I charge a 6% and we do a six month listing. Of course that's negotiable. It can go up. Um, and sometimes it goes down, particularly like if I sold you the home and for some reason you're taking a loss, I'm going to help you with that loss. That's, that's part of longevity in the business and actually caring about your customers more than the commission fee that you make. And we do that on a fairly regular basis. If you're a repeat customer that's done, you know, 10, 20, 30, 50 transactions, we have several that have done that. 
absolutely we're gonna take care of you and reciprocate that. Maybe you're selling a house and buying a house through us and we're gonna to get to double end that. We're gonna take care of our customers. We're here to take care of the customers and make a living. There's, they're both. Some people are like, oh, you're always after the commission. Well, I mean, it is a business and it is how I feed my family. So yes, I'm after a commission. That's, that's, that, that's 100% accurate. Now, if you want to say that I'm greedy over a commission, that would be false. But to say that I want a commission, yeah, that's what I do. It's my, how I make a living. That's how I support my team. That's how I support Bridge Realty, who supports other secretaries and, and, and other ancillary businesses. It's, it's how the world goes round. We have to make a fee. I don't do this for free. Um, neither is any other agent, for that matter. If they're in the business to actually, like, uh, well, you know, um, yeah, you, you can't be in the business and do it for free. So, anyways, um, so the process, you know, you call up an agent. We go over the, the the criteria to get your home the maximum value, come up with the plan. We have vendors for anything, whether you need carpet, whether you need tile, whether you need roof, whether you need electrical, you need plumbing, general handyman, cleaning, yard care, whatever it is. The Metzger team has uh, reliable people that we've worked with for decades that we can put you in touch with and help you get those things done. And we love doing that. We love supporting our vendors that support us and giving them more business. We love helping people maximize the value of their home, minimize the market time, maximize the exposure. And that's the next thing that you that in the step is you come up with the marketing plan because not every home's the same. Um, there are certain things you do with every home. You put up a sign, you put it in the MLS, I go live on Facebook at pretty much any listing that will let me because um, I think that's a huge marketing tool, social media. But then there's other unique things that you do, such as, um, you know, open houses, flyer boxes. I have the, uh, hopefully I'll have it again. I had a 12 foot helium balloon. Maybe you watched that video. I was blowing that thing up. It was massive. Apparently it doesn't take well to 70 mile an hour wind gust. And when it gets impelled on the neighbor's fence, it slashes it. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew that literally uh, it would pop a vinyl balloon. It wasn't latex, it was vinyl. And uh, so we're working on getting that repaired because I'd like to see that thing up in the air again. And other unique uh, marketing campaigns such as email blasts to agents, email blasts to um, investors. Um, and then the, the, probably one of the more powerful things that we have is just the sheer number of active buyers in our database. Like it's in the hundreds um, of buyers. Some of them are looking for very unique things. Gosh, we may never find what some of these people want. Like this one guy, he wants me to find him. Literally his, his instructions are trash land, land that nobody wants, that they're willing to give away at any price so he can put his sheep on it. What's up, Facebook Live? This is part two. Who knew that uh, walking around a track while streaming media um, and having a black phone case would overheat the iPhone? Whoops. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I did not expect that to happen. But nonetheless, it happened. So I guess this is a two-part segment. So for those of you that are just tuning in, um, I'll bring you up to speed. The question was, what's the marketing plan, uh, the process of selling your home from start to finish? And step one, of course, was call a realtor, preferably the Metzger team. No surprise there. Shocker, right? Why would I, why would I encourage you to call anyone else? And step two is to have them evaluate what repairs should or shouldn't be done and give an estimate of value and be able to back that up with comparables and help you to position your home properly on the market. And then you negotiate the commission and term of the listing. And then from there, you go into the marketing plan. And of course, there's the usual, you put up the sign, you put it on the MLS, that's the realtor database. Um, and, uh, you know, and then of course you blast it out to Zillow and realtor.com and the company site and pretty much anybody's website. We use this uh, program called IDX. It stands for Internet Data Exchange and it's basically a, uh, uh, a process, I guess you'd call it, of sharing the data to other websites so that the consumers have the best available data. And then you get into the unique marketing things, which would be, you know, creating a video tour, doing drone photography, and photography is so important. Oh my gosh. So back, you know, 20 years ago, before digital, that's BD, and before digital, that, the times are crazy. Um, I would spend between four and $6,000 a year getting film developed. 
And the reason why I do that is because I knew that photos were important. And sometimes you take one, you think it's the money shot. And oh my gosh, it is not the money shot. It is a horrible shot. So you don't use that photo. But if you only took five photos, then what are you going to use? Then you're only going to put in two or three. That's not good. So I'd take rolls of film of every listing and pick the best of them. And then back in the old days, we used to have to put them in an envelope with the number on the back, with picture A, B, C, D, send them in to Risco. That was the company that would scan them in and image them for us. Craziest process. And then we got big time and got our first scanner so we could scan them ourselves. Anybody remember like the, uh, I think it was like the Magis scanner or something, where it'd be like, and then it would take like six minutes to load in like Windows 95. Oh my gosh. But we thought we died and went to heaven that we could get our pictures up in the same day. So that was the birth of it. You should find an agent that knows that and suffered through that and can appreciate how instantaneous digital is. Um, so my first digital camera was a 3.1 megapixel. If you think I didn't talk that up in my listing appointments, you're so wrong. I was like, I've got the 3.1 megapixel. Most agents don't even have a digital. Um, I thought it was all that. And I, maybe I was, I don't know. Probably not though. Anyways, um, part of the process. And, uh, so that's like the start of the process. That's like the first you know, theoretically like 48 to 72 hours of the process. The rest of the process is you'll get phone calls from your agent or text messages, um, whatever your preference to schedule showings. We'll get the home shown. We will follow up on the showing feedback and find out. So if we get five people that say, gosh, we like the home, but it's a little overpriced or we like the home, but they bought another home. Do you know what that means? You're overpriced. Or we like the home, but we were concerned about the carpet. We like the home, but we didn't like the color of the carpet. Buyers didn't like the carpet. We probably need to deal with the carpet and give a carpet allowance or take the carpet out, put new carpet in. It's a huge expense, huge inconvenience. But if it's the difference between the home selling and not selling, we probably need to address it. You know, and then of course you get an offer. We negotiate the offer, the, the, the terms, the sales price, the inclusions, the exclusions, the inspection time frame, the appraisal time frame, the closing time frame. Um, it, 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 there's a whole bunch that goes into it. Um, and then from there, that's when the work really starts for the agent. Getting the home listed and getting an offer, believe it or not, that's the easy part. People think, oh, well, it's so easy. You put the sign up and you collected a fee. No, there's so much more that goes on behind the scenes because then once we get the offer, then we've got to order the title work, review the title work, clear title problems. I'm working on one right now where the person sold the property and the owner carried the contract, no problem. So the buyer made all the payments, finished those payments up. Oh, you know, 15 years ago. You know what happened to the guy in the last 15 years? He passed away. And now we're like, oh great. So now we gotta go to all the heirs and track them down, get their signatures so that they can sign off and release the lien off the property. We're only, you know, like eight hours into this process, Facebook searching and other ways of searching. And, and it's like, oh my gosh. Um, and it's a good fee on this one. Um, a big fat fee of zero. I did this transaction for free. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you win some, you lose some, but, uh, it's going to be great for carbon County. So you, you do what you got to do sometimes. And so then, you know, that's, that's, that's not a horrible part. And then inspections, you know, your home inspector comes in and God love them. They, they their job is to find stuff wrong. <laughs> How'd you like that for your job to find stuff wrong? Uh, some people would be really good at it. Um, home inspectors are really good at it. And so they'll usually come up with a list of 5, 10, 20, 50, 70 things wrong with the house, most of which are of no consequence. And then there's a few big consequence. <laughs> so, you know, you uh, we, we negotiate those, get bids to get that taken care of, mitigate that. Um, and then you get questions like, hey, um, there's no mailbox. Do we get mail delivery at the house? Great question. Don't know. Let me find out. Call the post office. They say, I don't know. Where's the property located? You tell them. They said, well, we still don't know. You call the owner. The owner says, well, how would I know? It's been rented for the last 20 years. Great question. Try and track down the renters. They don't answer. So then you go asking the neighbors, hey, do you know, do they get mail delivery? And they're like, well, it's not my problem. Close the door in my face. Well, okay. 
So then you go down and count the number of homes at the top of the lane and the number of mailboxes and realize that there's three homes, three mailboxes. Maybe there is, but there's one that has no address. Is it yours or is that federal property? Can you take it? Can you not take it? Could you put the numbers on? Would the neighbors be mad? Oh my gosh. So that, you know, then your hours into figuring that out. So that's part of the behind the scenes process. The seller doesn't even know I'm doing this. He just knows closings delay today. Um, I mean, if I, I'm not withholding info, it's just like, what does he care what the problem is? He just wants to know if it's going to close, right? So, <laughs> um, we're, <laughs> there's so many little things that go on behind the scenes from, from that to, to, you know, getting, make sure the buyer switched utilities over. And in the summertime, it's not as important, but in the wintertime, man, that's scary. What if the buyer doesn't move in for a week, seller turns off utilities and now there's frozen pipes. Well, when do the pipes freeze? Whose problem is it? So, is, there's so many little things that agents do on the selling process to, to get to that all important closing table, which, you know, when you get to that, that's, that's the best day. Actually, that's the second best day. The best day is when the title company calls and says it's recorded, it's funded, seller, pick up your money, buyer, here's your keys, and life is grand. So that's kind of a nutshell. Love to answer any specific questions if anybody has any. And some real quick sales statistics, and I'll get back to my calls and enjoying the scene from my office today. Last 10 days, there was 10 new listings, 10 new listings ranging from $58,000 to $900,000. If anyone's looking for a $900,000 house, by God, let us know. We can, we can take care of you. Um, and if you want the $58,000 one, we'll be glad to take care of you too, to be clear. We're not just looking for the big deal. We're looking for all of the deals. So 10, that's about average. If you were to take the last, like, I don't know, year of 10-day averages, it's about 10. So we're right on par there. Sometimes there was two or three, and then there are other times there was 18, but 10 is about the average. Um, then there was 17 that went under contract. So we're down seven more listings. That's nuts. And the ones that went under contract, another wide range from 65 to 315. So good range there. And there was 11 solds, ranging from 30,000 to 198,000. So again, a nice spread, nice... Uh, not really balanced numbers, close to balanced, but we're still selling more than we're listing. So that's always uh, great for the sellers because it means that they're going to get a premium and the buyers won't be able to beat them up. Bummer for the buyers because inventory is tight. But nonetheless, the market's doing well. You know, over two decades selling real estate here. This is by far the best market that I've ever been in. As far as the, the volume of sales, the value of sales, it's insane. Um, and we love it. And we're also terrified by it because it's different territory. Um, and we're just figuring out like how we, how we do this. But home has become so much more important in this COVID world because you might be stuck there. You better like where you're stuck. And also we're seeing here in Carbon County an interesting influx of people coming from out of the area that are like, we're getting out of the city. We're going to someplace smaller and welcome to Carbon County. We'd love to have you as part of our community. And so I think that's all I've got to ramble about. That was a lot of rambling in two videos. Sorry about the cutoff there on the first one. It, uh, <laughs> I didn't think my phone would overheat, but apparently a black phone case in a uh, heat wave is a bad idea when you're streaming. So anyways, thanks for watching. If you have questions specific to, well, anything, give us a call, message us, tag us, and we would love to answer those questions. I'm probably gonna go live at a listing later today. Um, it's a little cottage, um, needs a little fixing up, but it's got some great potential, just over 100,000 right by the college, so great value there. And thanks again for watching. Please do refer your friends, your family, anybody you know that needs a realtor to the Metzger team, we'd sure appreciate it.